Hello, I'm Paco Muñoz. Let me explain router sockets in Zero and Q. The goals of this presentation are to identify the main characteristics of router sockets, to use these sockets in appropriate scenarios, and to revise the advantages of asynchrony in regard to throughput. The contents of this presentation are structured in this way. Let's start. Zero and Q provides different types of sockets. Rec-rep, push-pull, pub-sub, etc. There are two advanced types that define a joint pattern, dealer and router. The dealer socket is a replacement for rec sockets. So it's intended for client processes, but it's asynchronous. And the router socket is a replacement for rep sockets, so it's intended for server processes, but it's asynchronous. And being asynchronous compels it to distinguish among all the connected processes. Why? Because it may receive multiple requests and it should decide to which client each one of the corresponding replies should be sent. So, let's describe the socket in detail. As already stated, it's a bidirectional socket that is also asynchronous. It allows to send messages to a specific peers, to a specific clients in the common case. To this end, it assigns an identity to every process it is connected to. The identity is given in the other process using a statement like this. And this means that the corresponding socket has an identity property where we assign a given string. If one of those peers has no associated identity, that is, we haven't used a statement like this in the corresponding process, then the router creates a random identity for that other process. And such created identity is generated while the connection is set. This also means that that statement in the other process should be run before connecting to the router. If the connection is dropped or closed, and the other process needs to reset that connection, to reestablish the connection, then the random identity is changed in this reattempt. IDs are arbitrary binary strings of up to 256 bytes long. In regard to communication management, let's discuss how messages are transformed by this socket. So, when the router receives a message and passes that message to the application, then it prepends an additional initial segment with the ID of the corresponding connection, that is, of the corresponding process. On the other hand, when the router socket tries to send a message, it interprets its first segment as the connection identity. And we should consider that router sockets maintain a set of pairs of incoming and outgoing messages. Each one of those elements in that set corresponds to a different connection. So, the first segment that we have presented here is used in order to locate the appropriate connection. Once that connection is found, that first segment is dropped. But the programmer doesn't need to do anything related to this. This is made automatically. And the rest of the message, that is, the other segments in the message, are put in that connection allowing queue and eventually they will be sent. This management 
allows a trivial router de dealer brokering. The broker process uses to this end a front-end router socket and a back-end dealer socket. So, the overall scenario is this one. Clients will use REC sockets that are connected to the router of the broker and the broker uses a dealer socket in order to connect to the real servers that use rep sockets. Recall that router is intended for servers, but this broker behaves as a server for those clients. And dealers are intended for clients, but this broker behaves as a client for all these servers. So, each message received from the router is sent through the dealer without any conversion. And each message received from the dealer is sent through the router, again without any transformation. In both cases, no message segment needs to be modified. We are transferring all the segments. Let's see an example of interaction between processes. Let's imagine that we have a client that interacts with that router. Well, initially, the REC peer should set an identity and should connect to the router. Let's assume that that identity is peer1, that string. So, we have connected to the router and with this, the router has assigned that identity to a pair of incoming and outgoing queues. Later on, the client, using the REC socket, sends a message. That message automatically gets an initial delimiter that is prepended to the original message. And the process sends the message to the router, and the router receives the corresponding message. Now, the router, as already explained before, prepends the identity of the connection to the message to be delivered to the application. And that message is delivered to the process. The router application creates an answer and that answer is put in the corresponding reply. But the reply, remember, still has this first initial uh, segment in order to identify the connection. So, it sends these three segments to the client. The router socket strips the identity segment and leaves the rest of the message in order to send all those segments. And now it sends that message to the appropriate client because the first segment has identified the connection to be used. So the message is sent and it is received by the REC socket at the client process. Now, the REC processes that received message. It checks whether it has an initial delimiter. That's true, it has. So, it accepts the message and removes that initial delimiter. In the end, this means that this string is delivered to the process. So, it has received the initial answer sent by the server. Let's conclude the presentation. Once this presentation is ended, the student should be able to identify the main characteristics of these sockets, to use router sockets in appropriate scenarios, and to revise the advantages of asynchrony in regard to throughput.